You ever thought about building a championship real estate team? Here's a few things to take into consideration that'll hopefully make it a little bit easier and give you clarity on what your model looks like. The first thing that we've always done when we help agents build out that championship team is look at the org chart. How big do you want to get? Do you know how big you want to get? So we divide everything into two categories. We have the sales side and we have the admin side. So on the sales side, that's really the lead flow. So how many leads do you need to get to come into the door to go ahead and meet your goals? So when leads come in, Who's gonna answer those? Are you gonna have an inside sales department or is it gonna be the real estate agents that are gonna get the leads? What's the resp response time look like? Um, when you do, when they uh, when they talk to the lead, what are they gonna say? What are they gonna do? Um, how are they gonna, how they, are the leads gonna get distributed amongst the team, okay? Once they go under contract or you get a new listing, uh, who's gonna handle that? So on the admin side, who's gonna be doing marketing? Who's gonna be doing um, uh, creating paperwork, listing agreements, sales contracts, so forth? Who's gonna be processing the contracts, communicating with title? lenders, inspectors, and so forth. Will it be your agents or will you have your admin take care of it and have more of a full service team? Um, who's gonna be paying the checks, the expenses, putting up the signs, putting up the lock boxes, all of those different pieces of the puzzle. So when you look at the org chart now as a single agent, you're in every single box. So once you look and you identify, okay, here's all of the positions, then you wanna say, okay, what's my highest skill set? What do I do that is, what is, what is the number one thing I can do with my time to uh, impact the bottom dollar the quickest. Then you wanted to take those, keep those duties, but then look at what are all the low hanging pieces where you can hire somebody else at a lower dollar than what you're than what you're worth at a lower dollar, delegate them out, or maybe it's just things that you're not good at. For me, paperwork. I'm just not a fan of paperwork. I can do it, but it's painful. So I delegate all those pieces out because my highest skill set is going to be being face to face with clients, conversion and negotiating contracts. Okay. So identify your highest skill set and then what areas you can delegate out. Then you're ready for your first hire. When you get your first key hire, is it going to be an admin or is it going to be a, a is it going to be a, an agent? Okay, so again, what you want to look at is what if your highest skill set is going to be out listing homes and showing homes, then maybe you want to have somebody on the admin side. Maybe you're one that's a great in conversion and you don't want to be face to face, then maybe you're going to be the one that's on the call procuring deals and you have a showing agent. So depending on how fast and how rapidly you want to grow, that really also depends on how much money have you stockpiled in the bank and uh, and what your reserves look like, and so the and also what your lead flow is. Because again, you have to be able to be bringing on new agents. You have to have a plan of what your lead flow is going to be. So when you look at lead flow, we look at, the, we have the five main pillars of lead generation. Okay. We have your, your sphere of influence. You have your open houses. Then you have the, the bucket of uh, FISBOs withdrawn expires. You have uh, farming neighborhoods. And then you also have online lead generation. So what are the, say, the one, two, three primary uh, pillars that you're going to use and maximize to funnel and, and fuel the lead? Leads for your team okay then you go into budgets and things like that but you really want to just build out build out that plan and have a really solid plan going forward so you can forecast and look at what growth gonna look like as well once you hit that step then we go deeper so if you want if you like to get a little more clarity and help on how to build a championship team we'd be happy to happy to help you and give you a little bit of clarity um, you know and if you want um, click the link below I'd be happy to share with you the document that we break down the eight stages of of, uh, of your of your real estate career and it really shows what key pieces you need to go to the next level where you're if you're going from 20 deals to 40 deals 40 to 75 75 to 150 150 to 400 whatever level that is there's key pieces that you need to key pieces and systems that you need to have in place to make sure that you can make a successful transition but also don't over promise your your people your admin your sales team so you want to make sure you do it right cross the T dot the eyes and you will uh, you'll have uh, you'll have a victory